All right, I didn't have high hopes for this at all, but actually watching it, it's pretty disappointing because some effort went into this. At some points of the show, they actually managed to capture the style of Cowboy Bebop. But Netflix does it again, ruining one anime at a time. They're on a roll, but more on that later. But I will congratulate the show on giving me the greatest sleep ever. It was just like the best sleep of my life. I had a blast. I felt great, incredible. But everyone's been talking about how bad it is. I think that people hate it so much because it actually kind of comes close to capturing the style. There are certain scenes that like give off that almost feel like the show, like episode six, which I'll get into more later. But I wanna examine this and to see how to make a good remake. One way to make a good remake is to expand the original themes and ideas. The new show does cover some of the same themes, but it simplifies them to its most basic form. And it kind of reveals that the creators don't have a deep understanding of the source material. It takes from the original, but also changes lots of things. Like Spike's backstory, the original, we only see fragments of his origin and like half the fun of the show was filling it in for ourselves because everyone could have like a different view. But in this new show, Julia and Vicious get way more screen time. They're literally in every single episode. All the mystery and intrigue from the original animated show is traded for a boring crime story like like in this show vicious is like he's like a bitch he's has daddy issues and he's insanely jealous over spike and julia and the original we didn't know much about him he was like this mysterious figure who spike had a relationship with and he was like everything was just so much mystery and we just assumed he was this crazy guy also in this new show julia somewhat randomly becomes the boss pretty much out of nowhere right at the end she just like becomes the boss major deviation from the show but i'm not fully opposed to change but I'll, I'll get into that later another way to make a good remake is to update the time and and like the visuals make it just look nicer more modern this one's kind of here just to <laughs> praise the film because there's not many good things to it so i have to make its own section but in order to even like come close to the style of Cowboy Bebop, he needed to do all the tricks in the book. The show does look cool, but it's completely style over substance. I think the creator saw the original and was just like, wow, it has so much style. So let's make every single shot a Dutch angle. Okay, in its defense, a good amount of shots do have like nice composition and like are framed well, but like there's never any meaning behind it. There's no reason why the camera should be moving like that or should be doing this. And since we're praising it, I feel like Mustafa Shakir is trying so hard. Like the script just holds him back, but he still like pulls it off. Like he's a very good jet. It's actually like pretty decent performance. He honestly should get like an Emmy because that script did not help him at all. And the only decent episode is episode six because even though the crew separated, the stories are connected in a pretty cool way. Phase B storyline ties into the overall theme of finding oneself pretty well. It's still not as effective as the original. The whole episode is essentially a loop and just keeps on going, creating somewhat of what the original was going for. Because in the original, it was designed to be episodic. The episodes eventually feel somewhat repetitive, which enforced that the Bebop crew is stuck in the same continuous loop, not accepting their past and they can't progress themselves at all. But this kind of did take me out the Netflix show because it just reminded me how good the original was. So it does tie into the bigger flaw of the show because it just picks and chooses what it wants to take from the original. But another thing it completely misses the mark at is this show looks good and has a lot of style, but it doesn't balance its different tones and genres. The original is constantly blending in genres and doing all this stuff, and it just made it such a unique experience. I think this is because like since the episodes were episodic and every session was like somewhat different, it was easier to blend genres like the whole episode would be written to blend the genre this is perfectly shown in the sad clown episode the original feels so much like a horror with its use of 
silence. The pace is much more deliberate. And when the music swells, it's super intense. And it has this horrifying crash of childish imagery. And the Netflix show, it kind of looks like he has superpowers. And he's nowhere as scary as the original. I think it's mainly because Mark Hamill voiced the original. Yeah, I said it. The dub is better. Watch the dub. Don't watch subs, idiot. But <laughs> anyways... The Netflix show tries to make his flying more realistic with his flying gadget, which is I think like magnetic or like some something. I don't know and I don't care. It's annoying because in the original show, the guy just defies gravity. He does whatever he wants. He breaks the rule. Cowboy Bebop is not a supernatural show. So the shock that we see this guy just levitating is insane. It plays into the horror aspect of it. It's like this horrible nightmare, but the show loves feeding us exposition. But this one time when it tries to do visual storytelling, it fails completely just because I feel like some viewers who haven't seen the anime will understand that his mind is regressing, which makes the line at the end where he's crying to his mother just completely not make sense at all. because. I I'm almost 100% sure some people will watch this not wanting to watch the anime because it's too cartoonish. Ironically, this show is more cartoonish than it and it's like it comes off way more dumb. And in this episode, the music isn't as effective as setting the tone the way the original does. It was more of fun chaos and cool fight scene and it's not like as scary and as interesting as the original but honestly this show felt more of a parody than anything else which is another way to make a good remake which i have a theory on that i feel like netflix is intentionally making really bad shows and really bad movies so that youtubers and reviewers everyone talks about how bad it is but all publicity is good publicity so we're all just feeding into the marketing of the show and i think when you make a really bad show like this you don't run the risk of ending up with like a blade runner 2049 you know that movie was incredible but it did need a huge budget to be made and it never made its money back Every Everyone said it was good, and then people were on to the next thing, but that's just a theory. A game theory, fuck. I feel like I could make the argument that this movie is just supposed to be a parody. If you look at the final scene with Ed, that literally looks like an early 2000s rock music video. It looks so bad. Like some look incredible and super stylized and super beautiful, but then there are others that look like a YouTube fan film, and its cringy script doesn't help at all. It's just such bad dialogue from start to finish. Especially this new Faye. Absolutely horrible. It reminds me of the first Avengers movie with its constant quips and lack of serious moments. They're just constantly making jokes even in the most serious of times. It's pretty annoying. And it like it works in Avengers because it's just a fun superhero movie. But this is supposed to be like kind of a mature sci-fi show that dives into very complex territories and it's like just another reason why the tone is so inconsistent but back to the topic of the video they could have still made a good remake it being a parody for example 21 jump street which instead of being a boring faithful remake it parodied 80s high school comedies but the final and most important way to make a good remake is to have it stand on its own this is the most important point does this show stand on its own no like i said with the clown thing i don't think most audiences that haven't seen the anime will even understand that line at the end looking at the show as its own piece of work it does have some good ideas but it comes off as this weird cartoony crime drama that has character motivations come out of nowhere it starts ideas but doesn't finish them and that script is just so bad like that script is just this is why i keep saying that it's a parody <laughs> There are moments where it's so bad, it's good. It's so bad, it's good. Sounds to me like blackmail. Ooh, stop watching this video, Chuck. You are black and you are male. No, that has to be racist. MLK did not die for this. What the fuck? Like the whole show is just very inconsistent. At the final fight, when Vicious and Spiker are aiming their guns at each other and they're recreating that anime moment, they have the trashest, most generic sound effect to play. But the biggest problem here is that it literally can't stand on its own. 
all the good ideas that this show has are the ones that it took but it doesn't nail it as well as the original show does the original was made to be episodic all the characters are frozen in time this doesn't translate well to bingeable netflix shows because ideally you'd want the characters to grow and change which gave us characters that were in this endless loop we had jet and they just completely destroyed jet's backstory like his backstory was a little political at the time because it essentially said that all cops were corrupt and that could be like a big deal in live action. Like the show kind of said that all cops are corrupt and abused their power because the reason Jet leaves the police force in the original show is because everyone's corrupt. And in this new show, he's chasing down a lead and he finds out like he assumes the whole force is corrupt. But at the end of the episode, he learns the lesson that there are people in the force that he can depend on. I mean, they quite literally made him a cuck because one of the cops is literally fucking his ex-wife yo some people were complaining that this show was like pushing an agenda and was like too progressive or something but like the original show was extremely progressive it had trans characters it had non-binary characters in 1998 this show also has that same character but just completely deleted their story so yeah that's tough and one of the things i hate about this show i do agree that i feel like it's being progressive just because it's marketable like like the country is pretty divided on the stance on police so saying that police are corrupt wouldn't be very marketable but having lgbt characters is very marketable so they did it i feel like throughout this video i depicted the creators as like very dumb and like as if they don't know what they're doing but they obviously do and they created a show that like doesn't really take risks even though the original took massive risk but yeah i hate that they had so much time in the show and they just filled it up with bullshit it's kind of impressive that there's like constant fight scenes and i still fell asleep twice and i was like i didn't know if i can make it through there's a ton of reviewers that watch the show and like they reviewed it only watching a couple episodes but no i pushed through god damn it it doesn't matter how bad it is i watched the whole thing all right but obviously Netflix knows all of this and if they really wanted to, they could make a good show. It doesn't matter or how people feel about it, it only matters if it makes money. Even though everyone saw how bad the first Avatar The Last Airbender live action movie was, Netflix is still going to make a live action show and a lot of people are probably going to watch it. But yeah, those are my thoughts on it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and thank you for watching. I know it turned into like basically a rant at the end, but that's how I felt about it.